The CTRAN tutorial presents the step-by-step -step procedures involved in creating a simple contaminant migration problem. Here is a schematic diagram of the problem to be analyzed. On the upland is a pit containing a contaminant fluid with a relative concentration of 10 kilograms per meter cubed. To the right of the pit is a valley where the water table is located at the ground surface. The objective is to model the movement of the contaminated fluid from the pit to the valley floor. This will be first approximated by a particle tracking analysis and then modeled using an advection dispersion analysis. Chemical diffusion is considered inconsequential and is ignored. CTRAN is always used in conjunction with SEEPW, a finite element seepage software program which is also part of the GeoSlope product line. The first step in creating a CTRAN analysis is to solve a seepage analysis using SEEPW. For this tutorial, a seepage analysis has already been developed and solved, and you can open the file to take a look at the seepage results. It is also assumed for this tutorial that you are familiar with the GeoStudio environment. If you have never worked with GeoStudio before, you may wish to first review the tutorial for SEEPW. Here is the finite element mesh that was developed using SEEPW. It's included in the examples folder for CTRAN that was downloaded with the software. Notice that the SEEPW icon is highlighted in the side toolbar. To add a CTRAN analysis to the existing GeoStudio project, choose Select Analysis from the file pull-down menu. Click in the CTRAN checkbox such that both the SEEPW and CTRAN modules will be activated. To view any of the SEEPW input parameters, Click on the SEEPW icon and all the information used to develop the seepage analysis will be available for you to review. You can review the input parameters in Define or you can switch to the contour view by clicking on the contour icon. To switch to CTRAN, simply click on the CTRAN icon in the analysis toolbar. The finite element mesh and the geometry will be shared between the two programs, but the pull-down menus and the required input parameters will depend on the program that is currently active. While the geometry has been shared between the two programs, SEEP didn't require the definition of a mass unit. To set the mass unit in CTRAN, go under Set, Units and Scale. The units for mass in this analysis will be kilograms. The first type of contaminant simulation we're going to conduct is a particle tracking analysis. Select Key In Analysis Settings. Even though the CTRAN analysis has been added to a project that already contained a solved SEEP analysis, the internal seepage results need to be flagged such that they are used by CTRAN. This is also the dialog box where the type of analysis is defined. In order to keep the integrity of the SEEPW file intact, change the name of this project to reflect that it is now an integrated analysis. The next step is to define the particles along the base of the pit. Turn on the background grid if it isn't already on and zoom into the area of the pit. Choose Particles from the draw menu. Use the cursor to place particles in the pit in the following locations. These are the starting positions of the contaminant particles. Now an incremental time sequence needs to be defined. Let's analyze 55 time steps in 50-day increments which will result in a total elapsed time of 2,750 days. The time steps have been flagged to save results for every five time steps starting at time step 5. Now the particle tracking analysis can be solved. CTRAN will track the particles through the finite element mesh using the SEEPW computed velocities and the water contents. The Solve window will display the number of particles inside and outside the mesh for each time step. This allows you to determine when a particle has moved outside the mesh and is no longer being moved by Solve. To view the results, click on the contour icon. The results that appear by default are the location of the particles at the last time step, in this case time step 55, which corresponds to an elapsed time of 2,750 days, which is about seven and a half years. 
To view results for any other time step, you must load that particular time step using View Time Increments. Load Time Step 30. For presentation purposes, it's often useful to shade the region of the mesh that is contaminated. To shade between particle migration paths, choose Particle Shading from the draw menu. Move the mouse and click between the two paths you would like shaded. Information about a specific particle can be viewed by choosing Particle Information from the View menu and then selecting an individual particle. Now let's look at how to conduct an advection dispersion analysis. While particle tracking is a quick way of presenting the contaminated region, a complete advection dispersion analysis is required if you wish to know the concentration within a contaminated region. From the Define view, save the file under a new name to make a new GeoStudio project and keep the particle tracking information intact. Under Key in Analysis Settings, set the transport type to advection dispersion. The internal CPW results are still flagged to be used by CTRAN. The time steps will remain unchanged from what was defined for the particle tracking analysis. Since the particles are still shown on the profile but are no longer necessary, you can remove them by selecting Key in Particles and clicking on Delete All. An advection dispersion analysis requires some additional material properties. Select Key in Material Properties. The single material that appears here was initially created using CPW and is now shared with CTRAN. The longitudinal dispersivity is 2 meters and the transverse dispersivity is 1 meter. Since molecular diffusion, decay, and absorption are not considered in this example, leave the other input parameters at their default value of 0. Select Copy and write the dispersivity values to the list box. Click on OK to save. In this example, a continuous injection of contaminant is assumed to exist along the bottom of the pit and the relative concentration along these nodes will be set to equal to 10. The nodes that exist on the valley floor will be defined as a free exit boundary, which allows both dispersive and advective fluxes to cross the boundary. Boundary conditions are defined using Draw Boundary Conditions. First define the contaminant source. You can either click on a single node or use the cursor to drag a box around the nodes. Now define the free exit boundary. A flux section can be used to compute the total mass flux across a section of the profile. Ensure the Snap to Grid option is turned off, then choose Flux Sections from the draw menu. Click OK to select Flux Section number 1, and then use the mouse to click and place a flux section that cuts across the entire profile and doesn't intersect any nodes. The problem definition for the advective dispersive analysis is complete. Click Verify Optimize and the program will check to make sure all the required input parameters have been defined. Launch Solve. Once Solve is done, open Contour. The velocity vectors and location of the phreatic surface are as they were determined by CPW. Let's create contours of the contaminant concentration. Choose Draw Contours. Type 0 in the starting contour edit box and create contours with increments of 1 up to a maximum contour of 10. You can label the concentrations using the Draw Labels command. Across the flux section we drew, CTRAN will allow you to display the results for various mass flux values. Use Draw Flux Values to place a value, 
and then use View Preferences to define what mass flux value you would like to show on the flux section. You can also change the font. The View Node Information and View Element Information commands allow you to check the exact computed values at any node or Gauss region by clicking on the node or Gauss region directly. Choose Node Information from the View menu. Click on a node to see the results computed at that node. You can also view the amount of mass that has accumulated at specific elements. Select Mass Accumulation from the View menu. If no elements have been selected, the box will show the total mass in the system. To view the mass in a group of elements, click on each element individually or use the cursor to drag a box and select a group of elements. Another powerful feature of Contour is the ability to generate graphs of the computed results. Let's look at a graph of the computed concentration along a vertical section. Choose Graph from the draw menu. Select Concentration and Y coordinate. Then click on Step 55. Highlight a group of nodes and once they've been selected, a graph of concentration versus Y coordinate for these nodes will appear. If you click on the Data button, you will have access to the raw data which can then be copied and pasted into a spreadsheet for further analysis. Another way to view the results is to contour one concentration value at different elapsed times. For example, the location of a relative concentration of one for each time step. To create a time-dependent contour plot, you'll need to load all of the time steps using view time increments. Type 1 in the Value to Contour edit box and then select OK. To display the time increments on the contour lines, choose Draw Contour Labels and click on each contour line. At any time, if you want to get back to Define, you can click on the pencil icon in the Analysis Toolbar. You can also return to the GeoStudio Start page by clicking on the Start page icon. From the Start page, you have access to some important resource material. You can then return to the current analysis by clicking on the appropriate icon in the Analysis Toolbar. We have reached the end of this introductory lesson. Not all of the powerful features of CTRAN have been used or discussed during the lesson. Specific details about each command are given in the online help and in the supporting documentation for CTRAN.